In this interview, I talked to Dave Fox and we discuss accelerated mobile pages or AMP. Dave has some experience with AMP and I have none. So it was an interesting conversation and hopefully after you watch it, you'll have a better handle on whether you need to look at AMP or not and maybe you know put it on the back burner for a little while. So let's get to the discussion now. Hey, what's up? It's Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. I'm here with my friend Dave. Looks like a rock star having a frappuccino <laughs> there or something. Mango smoothie. Cool. So some uh, people may be newer to the channel. They don't know you. So uh, you and I worked together a little bit a few years ago. I, I helped coach you a little bit uh, with some of your early Amazon affiliate sites. And you've been doing it uh, essentially full time for the last about three years or so. Yeah. And uh, can you tell everyone just a little bit about yourself um, otherwise outside of, you know, niche sites? Sure. So, yeah, basically, I was teaching music for the past 10 years before I got into niche sites. And then I got into niche sites and it helped supplement some of the income that I needed through, you know, teaching being somewhat inconsistent. And then eventually I moved into full time and that's what I do. So, cool. yeah. This uh, video, we're going to talk about AMP or accelerated mobile pages, which I, to be honest, have pretty much ignored uh, that. I have uh, a few websites. I generally use like a WordPress and I generally use uh, actually always a responsive theme. And I just felt like, hey, I'm covered. But Dave has been yeah. diving a little bit deeper into it. So Dave, since you've studied a bit more, can you just sort of describe what AMP is? Um, right. for the people that don't know? So my understanding is it's like a Google sort of run initiative that it's like they're trying to like speed up mobile pages so they have this special thing that basically strips off like excessive code to make it so your mobile pages are super fast and it gives you like a little lightning bolt when you achieve your amp amplitude or whatever. So that's um, the idea behind it. And then there's, uh, you know, when I first got it, it was because I was seeing like one of my sites was getting like kind of pinched for some reason. I was like, well, it could be this or that. But I'm like, one thing that seemed like it could be a solution is like speeding up the uh, mobile pages, right? Because we were getting more mobile traffic. So that was why what prompted me to get into it, essentially. Awesome. Okay. So in general, it's uh, making, making the web pages load faster for mobile users. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does it also impact like non-mobile users too? Like does it compress the code or optimize things otherwise? I don't think so. I think it's just, no, because what it does is it makes like a an alternate set of URLs for your site that are AMP URLs. So it's just like only on the mobile pages that load does it do that. And okay. so, and that's where it strips the code away. And that's where it can cause problems too if the code is like not easily strippable. Okay. Got it. So in general, it sounds like a no brainer. It sounds like a good thing um, to right. like try to implement AMP. Although like any sort of implementation or yeah. anything where we're doing technology stuff, problems right. could happen. Right. So did, I mean, you had some issues when you were trying to migrate, right? Yeah, basically. So I took my one site that's like the, what would be the easiest one to turn into to an AMP site and basically tried it, tested it on that site. And then that still gave us problems because we like, you know, we're not really coder people, but we have a sort of vague concept of coding. And so right away we got, once we got the plugin, there's a plugin that makes it easy supposedly. And then we put that on there and then we ran into like your typical, like indecipherable error messages. <laughs> and that's where we're like, okay, now what do we do? So yeah, so that's, we didn't get stuck though. We basically like bought the premium plug in and got the support, which, you know, immediately they were kind of helping us sol solve the sort of the puzzles that were happening as far as the code or like the error messages and stuff. So then, and we got it up and running and it was working. So. Got it. And I guess, uh, from when you installed the plugin until things were resolved with the help of support, how long did mm -hmm. that take you? Definitely like a few weeks, but I think it was sort of more like we were trying to fix it first. So, I mean, like this could have been condensed into like a couple days, but we were like, no, no, we can fix this. Like no big deal. Like these, are, we can figure these errors out. Cause like my buddy was like, I'll just research this. It'll be no problem. But of course it was like, <laughs> it was a problem. So that's when we were like, okay, fine. We'll get support. 
I know the feeling. Yeah, you, you're you yeah. like, oh, that's not too bad. And then every time you pull the thread, like the whole sweater comes undone, right? So, <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, cool. Now, earlier you mentioned like uh, your site had a little bit of a pinch. D- did that mean like the traffic went down? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, it was kind of like at first, you know, you're thinking like, it's, is it the season or is it one of Google's many updates or what's causing the traffic to flag a little bit? And so we were just like, you know, in that, you know, when that happens, you kind of start brainstorming and like, what can we do? What can we do? So, you know, AMP was just like, seemed like a no brainer, like you said, to like possibly solve some of the problems, like okay. get some of the traffic to come back if that was the issue, because we weren't sure at that point. All right. Well, and, and I think um, based on what you were saying, um, we were chatting beforehand. So like once you got AMP going, did like the traffic um, like go higher or was it pretty much like the same or what happened? Well, basically on that one site, we lost, the problem was that we lost our mobile tracking on analytics. So we lost half the traffic and just disappeared because the tracking wasn't working on the mobile pages because of the AMP. And then by the time we fixed that, it came back and then it seemed to be both the same essentially. Like, so we did get our little AMP lightning bolt on mobile. And I think we might have gained like a slight amount of load time, like it's faster, but we didn't like see crazy results or anything. It was just kind of like, this is okay. You know? <laughs> sure. Now, can you, um, can you tell us where you find that you're talking about this lightning bolt thing? Mm. Uh, where, where is that? Where would I see this lightning bolt? Um, when you load it and it, on mobile, like the page and it works, there's like a circle with a lightning bolt to be like, it's like, you know, you got the amp going. So it's like, like it's on the browser, on, like on, on, on your browser. Yeah, like it's in the top corner. There's like a little circle. Okay. I'd have to load it up again and see exactly where it is. But sure. Okay. I think that's like the, the symbol for AMP. Got it. And is that on like, I have an iPhone and use like Safari, the default. Do, do you have to be using Chrome to see the lightning bolt or is that like ubiquitous on all um, browsers? I'm going to say it's ubiquitous, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. All right, sure. cool. Because I, I, you I know what? Use- I've never noticed a lightning bolt, but you know, I never looked for one. So Did, do you have it on there? I mean, I like for yeah. any site ever that I've looked. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I have no uh, AMP enabled anything. So I started seeing it the first time I saw the lightning bolt. I was looking at like like some kind of like meme site or some kind of like image repository. And we're like, there's the lightning bolt. So That's these fun. like image guys that were like doing like gag, like it's like eye gag or something like that. It was like they had it. And we're like, okay, so that's what we're looking for. So that's what we we eventually found, saw it on our own site. So, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go out on a limb and you could correct me since you actually uh, have worked with AMP a little bit. Uh, by the way, we'll place links uh, for the AMP project in the description so you can check it out and learn about it on your own, do some investigation. But here's my assumption. Uh, If your site generally is uh, like a fast loader for mobile, you're probably not going to see like a huge benefit by moving to AMP. And my assumption is if you have a slow loading or a less optimized site um, on for mobile or in general, you'll probably see more of a benefit from load time, which potentially could have better uh, like user visitor interaction because your site will load fast and they'll be happy to be there. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Is that accurate from your observation or? Yeah, I'd say like, I mean, if you have a, like for instance, my, my buddy, he has a real estate site, which is like full of like crazy code from the uh, real estate listings and whatnot. So AMP, the way that AMP processes that is it kind of goes like, okay, well just like scrap all this listing crap and whatever. And, and so that, the more bloated the code is, the more AMP is going to try to like to slice through it, I guess. So certain sites would really probably benefit more than like if your site's already kind of responsive and mobile friendly, then it's like you're probably just like splitting hairs a bit. But then with like some giant bl- like real estate site, it's like if you can get AMP to work on it and it actually doesn't like ruin the whole site, then you're probably going to see some serious benefits, I would assume, you know, because like that code that's causing such havoc with load time is not there because it can't be in the amp environment right cool that totally makes sense yeah and so i I think we could tell people uh you know check it out do some investigation maybe see how your traffic is uh like 
interacting on mobile, you know, through Google analytics and stuff. And then yeah. if you decide to go the route of implementing it, I would oh, like always highly recommend if you're messing with your site, have a backup that you could easily and quickly restore. Um, mistakes are always made hundred yeah. percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. So do you yeah. have anything else to add Dave to the migration or anything? Yeah, I would say like, yeah, again, like, if you have a site that's not going to like, that's pretty simple to apply it to, that's not going to, it's going to cause the least problems, like, and it's, you're not going to lose money the second you apply it and it screws up and do it to that site. So that's what I did. I applied it to a site that was like not a money site. And it just like that way when it, it kind of crashed for a bit there, I was like, well, at least I'm not losing money. <laughs> right. Sure. Well, and the other thing is I'm pretty sure you could hire someone, a uh, contractor, that is an expert in implementing AMP and they could go and do this probably pretty quickly and then solve the problems um, pretty fast as well. And in fact, this will tie in a little bit to our next conversation in the next video. So people, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, working with contractors, paying them and some other stuff like that. So be sure to check yeah. out that other video um, yeah. that we'll link up as well. Yeah. I just want to throw on there that like, if you are total noob and you have no concept of codes and errors and stuff like that and it's going to be like you might experience some frustration when you see some weird coding error pop up from amp so just like keep that in mind that you, as soon as you hit run on on the amp thing you might encounter an error so just be prepared for that right on cool well thanks dave for joining us um where do you want people to uh follow you and like uh that sort of thing um as as always i'm trying to promote my my YouTube channel, which is Fotown Records, and it's, uh, it's just my little music project. So if you can check that out, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, head over there. It's F A U X T O W N Records. And yeah. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll link up your YouTube channel, of course, and other videos because you've been on the channel a bunch, and we appreciate you uh, taking the time out. So thanks, Dave. See ya. Yeah. Thanks. See you later.